Alrighty, well hello everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm super excited. I have a chance to hang and chat with my good friend Jake here. <laughs> we haven't had a, a little bit of time to get together beforehand um, to hit banter and get to know each other a little bit. So this will be the first time diving in to everything that you're up to. So how's it going, Jake? <laughs> How are you? It's going really well. Lots of exciting stuff going on. Uh, can't complain at a really good place right now, especially for somebody coming fresh out of school and everything's fallen into place. So very happy. Heck yeah. That's one of the things that I wanted to dive into because at least everything that I have heard, and again, I'm totally just a third party, uh, but it sounds like there's been a whole lot of success lately. You've been running around taking names and doing what you do. So what's up? What have you been up to? Uh, what are yeah, your prospects so, looking like? You bet. So I uh, just finished up at the university of Missouri here last May with a, uh, major in business, uh, certificate in sales, and then a minor in cybersecurity and, sorry, a minor in information technology, certificate in cybersecurity. And basically uh, my whole first three years of school, I thought I wanted to be a salesperson, make a lot of money, run around, do sales stuff. And then uh, had my first summer sales internship. And I was like, this just isn't where the passion's at. <laughs> this just, you know, it's not, it ain't for me. I really enjoyed it. It was a great company and the people were fantastic. But I was like, I don't want to spend the rest of my days doing this. And so with that being said, that same summer, I started doing a Udemy course on data science and some Python scripting and some stuff like that. Nice. And it was like, this is kind of fun. And I've always had a little bit of a knack for computer stuff, but uh, nothing super special. You know, I'm pretty sure any person my age did all of their grandma's networking, troubleshooting, or unplugged and replugged the router in when the Wi-Fi went out. But, you know, those kind of things. And so... After graduation, I actually, uh, this may be something we touch on later, but some advice I can have is really grind on LinkedIn network. I actually uh, connected with somebody in my college town on LinkedIn and messaged him. And I said, uh, hey, would love to chat with you sometime. And during our conversation, he's the owner of a local MSP. And during our conversation, he's like, he brought up, yeah, we're really looking hard for a right fit for a full-time position. And I was like, you know, if you'd be interested, uh, my class schedule, because I just started my IT minor, I was like three days a week, my classes are remote. And most of them were uh, recorded, so I didn't have to join them live. And I was like, I would love to come in two to three days a week and do what I can. And he's like, you know what? Come in for an interview and let's see what it's like. And uh, I messed truly really well. Tim Nar, he's an awesome guy. He uh, He's one of the three owners of JS Computech. Everybody there is great. And so... Yeah, I got back from school, did my interview, started there in October. Just, uh, I'm sorry, started there in mid-September, early September. I actually just had my one-year anniversary there not too long ago, so that was cool. But uh, with that being said, uh, that's how I got that. I did it part-time. They offered me a full-time position here once I graduated, and uh, that's when, about two months later, I had two offers to come on and join. One offer was to join as a security analyst looking at primarily uh, phishing emails and that kind of thing. And then uh, I got really lucky and got a second offer from a national MSP to come on as a quote unquote security analyst slash purple teamer. They are just now starting to build their security team out in their security division. So really getting to play an integral part and in what that could look like and what all, you know, get to meet all the cool vendors like Huntress and things like that and uh, really build out what the security program for our company is going to look like. And uh, that's where I'm at now. I'm still at the MSP in October 1. I come on board as a, I think my official title, title is going to be security analyst too or something like that starting October 1. Heck yeah. Congratulations, man. That Thanks. all sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, you know, really lucky, but, uh, you, you know, the saying, uh, I think it's in a song, yeah, the harder you work, the luckier you get. So really just getting after it, doing those home labs, connecting, messaging on LinkedIn, that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. There were some super good threads there. Uh, and I'll give just a super quick background context in case anyone listening doesn't happens to know oh, what is that heck? What is that MSP acronym? Uh, oh, the the managed service providers. And I'd totally love to get your opinion and hear what you're thinking, Jake, because like, from my, uh, from my eyes, and from my perspective, I always tend to explain, oh, a managed service provider is sort of that outsourced IT company that handles 
computer stuff for another business. Like, hey, you got a mom and pop shop. Hey, sell an ice cream on the corner or whatever, a dentistry or law officer. It, it totally doesn't matter. The MSP portion is the external group and entity that will run their website and handle their email and keep track of their files and backups, et cetera, shenanigans. Uh, is that what you were up to day in and day out? Yeah. So actually, uh, I did, I got, I actually started my uh, CCNA. And so they had me doing some network stuff. Nice. But, uh, in in Colombia, we don't necessarily have a ton of businesses that need new network set up, VLANs built out, stuff like that every day. So I am basically a level, uh, two or three technician go in and troubleshoot crud John, just about anything. I mean, <laughs> what you said is exactly right. When a small business doesn't want to pay, uh, whatever, 60, 50, $45,000 a year, they'll hire out to an, M to an MSP to come in and do pretty much whatever they need, whether that is troubleshooting issues, just getting computers set up, setting their office accounts up, anything like that. That's what we'll handle. And, uh, I do anything from mostly day to day from new user setups to uh, troubleshooting real basic issues or uh, lots of working with vendors. I think that's a big thing that uh, any MSP maybe should do. But a big thing we try to do is if our client needs help with a vendor, we step in and we we don't do a weird middle main thing. We're like, hey, we're going to be you and let us work with this vendor so you can keep working and go about your business. That's awesome. Yeah. One thing that I would uh, try to drive home if I could, because I think in the, and I'll put this in air quotes, right? Traditional infosec or like strict cybersecurity lane. Uh, there is some weird stereotype or perception that, oh, the, the MSP ecosystem is like, I don't know, the hinderlands, the wastelands, this is stuff that, oh, there, there's weird shenanigans there. But in all reality, in my mind, MSPs, managed service providers, like, they're on the front lines of, of cybersecurity and threats and hey, keeping track of making sure business operations right. keeps moving when there could very well be an onslaught of threat actors, malware, malicious oh, activity, shenanigans. Yeah. So uh, from the cybersecurity perspective, I see a heck of a lot of value in that because oh, yeah. enterprises or Fortune 500, big, bigger mid market industries could say, hey, we might deal with some incidents maybe once a year or hey, every right. couple of months. But I have to think for MSPs, it's like every every week, every day. <laughs> See, and that is where I've got lucky, especially recently since I, recently since I started this track, uh, any time within the last four to five to six months. And that is some, what you just pointed out. It does happen because you have so many different businesses. We probably have a security incident. And, you know, some are a lot less major than others. Yeah. I don't even want to say, but I'd say in our realm, you know, we we come in and shut down. Hey, this is a phishing email. Good job not clicking it. Or, hey, let's reset your password real, real quick. You just got a suspicious login. Uh, I'd say two or three times a month. We've got really lucky. We've not had any big data breaches or anything like that. You know, big knock on wood. But uh, you're exactly right. I think, uh, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, uh, you know, the model of an MSP is going to have to start changing slowly just because of the cloud. Yeah. There won't be as much on-site set up or deploying machines, you know, down the line probably. We'll plop down our phones or plop something down and our computer will automatically sync up on some thin client or something. So, you know, what? where would you see the MSP model fitting in? I mean, in my eyes, it's exactly what you said it's going to be a whole lot more on the focus of cybersecurity side and maybe slight, you know, networking at first, but eventually once you get a company built out, you don't have to work on their network anymore. Ideally. Yeah. I think it's an interesting thing. And, and, and I realize, Hey, I say that moments ago and that, that is a positive thing, not, uh, not a, a, a trivialization Certainly. or jab in no, any way. Sure. Cause in all reality, uh, the personnel, the teams, the people at, managed service providers are just raw technicians and system administrators mm -hmm. and the folks that can make the machine keep running against all odds. So I think your best fit 
for stuff coming at you left and right. When you're getting to the question, though, and I, when I, if I want to actually answer your question of like, okay, uh, we know that there's a future in on the horizon and we keep moving to the cloud or whatever buzzwords we want to say. Uh, it's interesting because obviously where I work and being at a cybersecurity vendor, yeah. we offer manage threat detection and response mm -hmm. to manage security yeah. platform. And I was like, wait a second, we're trying to manage managing things for a managed service provider. Well, we <laughs> we, actually managed we, we yeah. have yeah, yeah, yeah. deployed on our clients. But I think it's that. awesome and hysterical in a strange way <laughs> where it's like, we need to give the problem to someone else, someone better equipped, someone who can do this and yeah. does it full time. Uh, Cause the business themselves need to do their business. The MSP right. needs to run its own business. So right. we just keep moving it along. And you say the same thing with, oh, we're, we're rocking uh, Azure shop or Google Cloud platform or sure. AWS shenanigans, whatever. It's it's sometimes necessary because there's just so much else that you have to do. So right. I've heard the term MSP. I've also heard MSSP, and I might get this wrong, but I think of a managed services and security provider. Okay. Have you heard that? Am I wrong? I, I have now that you've said it. I've seen that float around, yeah. but... I've almost not seen it as something different than an MSP besides a company really just wants to differentiate like, hey, we also do security. You're right. You know, one of those things. I agree. I feel like it, it, it <laughs> they're basically <laughs> the same thing. It, it's, it's trying to blur the line when there shouldn't be one. It's like, well, right. you should already be focusing on security. It's, it should be part of the offering, right. part of the stack and the solution. Uh, so interesting and very cool. Uh, <laughs> But I'm glad that there is a new focus on it, and I'm glad you are moving yeah. and shaking in all the right places. So what is the new gig putting yeah. you into, if I may? So the new gig is a, is a new company called the 20 MSP, and they are a new company, but they're a new company. There's some NDA stuff in here, but they're a For new sure. company that's branching off of what is already a uh, help desk service. The 20 is a help desk service. And so basically the founder has sold this really good opportunity to start a national MSP. And so, uh, you know, back in the day, I believe he had sold a company previously. And so a lot of money's getting rolled in and basically uh, they're going to just continue to grow and grow really quickly. I know they've already rolled up. They officially launched not long ago and started to roll up companies. I believe they've already rolled up 10 to 15, maybe more, uh, local MSPs. And that's, I think, you know, I've not got to talk much about it, but I think their route is going to be to roll up companies until they start, get to the point to where they're comfortable and say, Hey, let's start building our own. But anyway, so that's who I'll be with. And, uh, you know, and that's where I think when we were talking there about MSPs a national MSP changes because you're going to have regional offices, obviously, but you're also, uh, there's going to be a lot more, moving parts to where normally an MSP is really a local thing because that's really been the easiest way to uh, handle it. It's going to be a really complex, big moving picture. And I'm really excited to come in and uh, help to build out not only the internal standards, but what are we going to use with our clients? What vendors are we going to use? Stuff like that. I think it'll be a really cool opportunity. Excellent. I'm super happy to hear it. And I think, uh, hey, if, if we could bundle it up and maybe wrap it together here, what do you think kind of led to that success? I think you're in a good spot that a whole lot of folks maybe listening in might be a little bit envious of like, Hey, how did you land this man? How, what is, uh, what, what got you this? Yeah. And, uh, I touched on this a little bit earlier, I suppose, but number one is going to be to, uh, network your butt off, go to conferences, meet people. Uh, the first job opportunity I got, I, uh, well, no, I actually messaged him on LinkedIn first. We went and got coffee a couple of times. And he brought up this uh, conference we have here in Columbia called Show Me IT Summit. And uh, anyway, I went to that after we had got coffee about a month later and basically followed him around all day and went into all the talks he was in. So then I could end up chatting to him for a few minutes. And uh, anyway, down the line, saw his company uh, post, a, post a job ad. And uh, I was like, hey, I know this is asking for five years of experience, but... I think I could come in and work hard and close that gap. Do you think I'd be a great fit? And because of that relationship we had had, he was like, I know you, I know you're working at this. I, he's like, I think you do awesome. And then uh, 
for the other job, again, it was, so my job sort of, I got connected to him because we actually used this company's help desk. And uh, I got connected to him because it was all about, uh, hey, let's, let me see how I want to phrase this here. It was, <laughs> I got connected to him because basically when I told my current boss I was leaving, uh, they had lost some employees to this company previously. And so he went to uh, the help desk owner and he's like, hey, we kind of interact with each other on a daily basis. You know, what are you guys looking at for a security programmer division? Because we've got this kid, he's really talented, he works hard. And, uh, you know, we've continually lost really good employees to this other company because we just, one, can't match what they offer, but two, we currently don't have anything big built off the security that he would be passionate about or want to get involved in. And uh, that's where the YouTube channel came in and my website that I have up, you know, people getting into the industry. Uh, I put my face on my videos. That part doesn't matter, but make content. It is a, it's an excellent source for future employers to get on and basically say, Hey, this guy kind of knows what he's doing. He's doing, or honestly, in most of my videos, it's an excellent source to see, Hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, but he's going to stumble around until he figures it out. And, uh, between my YouTube channel and the website, those are two great things. Uh, I post it all on LinkedIn and on LinkedIn again. I network like crazy. I do CTS whenever I can. It's really about building that network and then that YouTube channel helps support that, hey, this guy not only can like talk the talk, but you know, he can't really walk the walk either, but he can crawl. <laughs> He'll walk eventually. And uh, especially I think, and you can touch on this, in our industry, a lot of companies are willing to invest in this year, this guy in one to two years down the line could be really good. And we need good cybersecurity talent and uh, let's get him in here. Absolutely. I think I hit that probably relies on a couple really good pedestals that I, I, I like to try to, to preach and showcase is like, look, share your knowledge once you're learning something new uh, and, and, and show your work. Like the process is raw, it's dirty, you make mistakes, mm -hmm. but it's, exactly. the, it's the grit and determination that is a really cool and super valuable thing. Um, and when it comes to security, especially when it comes to like security training, a lot of businesses, I think are coming to the realization that like, if we invest in this thing, if we invest in our people, sure. At the, in the moment, it might feel like, oh man, this is something that we're gonna have to budget for. You know, this is just going to take up time, but it will make you money. Like it, it will save yeah. It will save funds and costs when something hits the fan and it will absolutely grow your brand, your business and everything that you need to do. Uh, so kudos to you, man. Hey, again, huge props. Congrats on all your success. And uh, I do want to give a super sweet, hey, plug and shout out. Hey, go check out Jake's channel. Uh, see what he's up to, moving and shaking over there. And in case you want to get any other perspectives, I think uh, we can keep chatting, my friend. <laughs> awesome. Let's do it.